What is up everyone? Today we're going to be talking about GraphQL. So what exactly is GraphQL and why should you be using GraphQL in 2020? Now this is a basic introductory video on the theoretical concept of GraphQL. We'll delve into the implementation details in later videos. Now to fully understand this video, I'd really recommend you have a basic understanding of what an API is. A lot of these resources and examples have been referenced from howtographql.com and graphql.org. So let's get started. What is GraphQL? Well, it's a query language for APIs and it provides a highly flexible and declarative data fetching mechanism. So what does that mean exactly? Well, basically you're very easily able to declare the specific data that you need and get that back. Nothing less, nothing more. So it's very flexible in terms of getting and requesting your data needs. And it exposes only a single endpoint, which is quite contrary to what most REST architectures go through. And it's initially developed and open sourced by Facebook early in 2012. So how does this actually compare to REST? A lot of you guys might say, well, I think REST is most commonly used right now. I think REST is a standard. Well, that may be true, right? REST is more commonly used right now because GraphQL is pretty new and REST has been out there for a long time. But a lot of companies are realizing how, how flexible and how powerful GraphQL is. A lot of these top tech companies are actually adopting GraphQL and using it in their technology. And that is because GraphQL's flexibility solves any overfetching and underfetching issues, which is very common in REST architectures. So what does that mean? Well, overfetching is really what it sounds like. You're fetching more data than you actually need at specific endpoints, and that extra overhead can actually affect performance. Similarly, underfetching is kind of the opposite, right? So you're asking, for, you're requesting data from a specific endpoint, and you're getting too little data, and so you have to make extra requests to other endpoints. GraphQL does not actually have any of these issues. In GraphQL also, the front end and back end are more decoupled. What this means is that in, in REST architectures, usually back end endpoints are set up in a way that they curate data specifically for the front end views, which is fine, right? But let's say you make an update on the front end. Let's say you update a screen and you add more values or you move specific values. And so most likely, oftentimes, the back end will specifically need to change to actually meet this change in the front end. And with GraphQL, you don't actually need to do this. You can just update the query in the front end and the back end can stay the same. So this allows for faster product iterations and more agile development. So this is just reiterating what I talked about, right? In REST, you're going to have to make multiple round trips to different endpoints to get the data that you need. And you'll face the issues we talked about in most cases like overfetching, where you're getting too much data you don't need, or underfetching, where you're getting data that's too little to what you actually need and you have to actually make extra requests to extra endpoints. With GraphQL, you only need to make a request to a single endpoint and you get all the data that you need, but nothing more, nothing less. So consider this scenario because now we actually explained the concept, but let's actually put an example to this. So consider you have an, a blogging application and then there's an app that needs to display the titles of the posts of a specific user. So you have a user and you want to put all their posts with their, only the title of that post. Also. On the same screen, you want to put all the names of the last three followers of that user. So let's see how REST would actually tackle this issue. So you would probably make a GET request to a specific endpoint defining your backend API, like user slash ID, and you, you get a response with, the, with a JSON object of the user with ID, name, address, birthday. Right? And then to actually get the post of the user, you'll make another request to user slash ID slash post, and you'll get a list of the posts with ID, title, content, comments, and similarly with followers, you make another request to user slash ID slash followers, and you get a list of their followers with ID, name, address, birthday. Right. So what possible issues do you see with this? Well, first of all, right, you're getting extra data that you don't need. Right. I never asked for address and birthday. I'm not using that in my front end. Why am I actually getting that extra extra data? I don't need it. Similarly here, I don't actually need the content or comments, and I don't need address or birthday. So why am I getting all of this, right? This is just extra overhead. Another thing is, depending on how your backend API is set up, right, you could be limiting the number of followers to the last three followers in your actual implementation. However, you might actually need to make another endpoint for listing all the followers, and so you might have a case where you're putting all the followers or like more followers than you need, and that's another example of overfetching. Right? So now let's see how GraphQL would implement this. So this is a syntax of a basic query in GraphQL. Now since you guys are just beginning, you might not understand the syntax, that's totally fine. We'll go into more examples in later videos. Just try to understand that this is a query and you're basically doing the same thing. You're getting a user with this user ID and you're specifying saying I only want the field name and I only want the posts 
with their title. That's it. I only want the title. I don't want the, the content or the comments. Similarly, I only want the last three followers of this user and I only want the name, right? So this is exactly what GraphQL does, right? It only gets the data that you need. You're able to declarely, de declaratively fetch the data that you need, which is great. And this is the response, right? You would have the name Mary, the post title, and the followers and their name. That's it. So this is great, right? This is where the power of GraphQL really lies because you only get the data that you need and you are able to maximize your performance. So who's currently using GraphQL? Well, like I said, Facebook is, but a lot of top tech companies are actually adopting GraphQL. Shopify, GitHub, Product Hunt, Coursera, Twitter, they're all realizing the power of GraphQL and they're making sure to use that in their software. Thanks for watching, guys. This was just an introductory video again of the concepts. We're go we'll go into the implementation details more in the next coming videos. And this whole series will end up having a full stack development project with the full login flow and sign up flow. Thanks for watching, guys.